Welcome, I'm Layla Harris, and I want to show you this card using Dragonfly Wishes that I have just recently created. It features totally awesome Stampin' Thin Cuts Z8033 and Dragonfly Wishes Stampin' Thin Cuts from the Card Creativity Special for September 2022. One of my favorite parts of this kit is the stitched background die. I'm giving you a screenshot so you can have a better look at it. I'm using only half of the die cut, which I cut from Seabrook. Next, I'll be attaching a piece from Beach Party to the lower half of the card. You'll see here, this is the beach ball part because it's part of the card making workshop. Next, I'm going to add some Capri that I die cut with one of our heart borders. I originally did this so I could get some waves, but I also realized that it would make a nice place for a sentiment too. Once I get this attached here, I'm going to add some detail using the white jelly roll pen. I'm using the 10, which is the largest of the three tips for this project. And I'm going to add some little white detailing here. So all I do is do a curve up one half of the wave and then draw two to three little dots on the other side. This doesn't have to be perfect because it is being hand drawn and it, that look is an intentional. And somewhere along the way, I'm not exactly sure where, I got my swoosh and my dot pattern mixed up. But I don't think any of the people who recreate this card or even watching this video would notice that until I point it out. Next, I'm stamping Have a Totally Awesome Day for the bottom of the card. You'll see here that I just used a regular ink, black ink pad instead of my intense black ink. For me, this one stamps really well and is extremely dark and crisp because I keep it well inked with my reinker. It's nice and juicy. And I'm not coloring on it, so I might as well just use a classic exclusive ink. You'll see one mistake I made when I'm attaching this. I attached it like a normal piece of cardstock, not bearing in mind that there were holes and kind of a lace edge. So I had to go back and apply a bit more adhesive. Sure, I could have done this with a bit of wet glue, but I had my Tombow at hand and so I just continued working with it. Now let's stamp the frog on the die cut with intense black ink. I always set my die cuts on a dark surface so I can see the outline clearly. I usually die cut first because I can cut two images and then I can go back and stamp them. To help me with this project, which I taught for a class, I created a color guide, which you see over here on the left. It uses our tribal and markers in the maximum way possible. For example, I'm using the light green blend and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the entire frog with the medium color, which would probably be LG3. And you'll see me color the entire frog first with the medium shade of this marker. One of the great things about Triblend markers is that you get three shades together and you know that they are actually going to coordinate and work together and blend. Sometimes they are one space apart. Sometimes they're two. For example, the medium is LG3 and the darkest is LG5. Either way, I know that I don't have to guess and check on which markers to buy because I'm getting three at a time that have already been selected. Turns out my dog does not like me talking to the camera. He thinks that I'm trying to talk to somebody that's outside. And so we have lots of barks and growls in my house. Okay, back to the card. Now with the same color in the same shade, I'm going to go right back over the areas where it would be shadowed. I'm adding a layer of color and without even switching to a different shade on the marker. You can layer colors in that. The inside of his legs and thighs and in between his front legs will be the most shaded part of the frog. See, this is really easy because I didn't even have to uncap another part of the marker. With the darkest shade of the marker, I am adding some details. And I'm doing this by just adding dots. It's really easy just to add dots. That way you don't 
create too much color in any one spot at any one time. One of my favorite things to do is after coloring the belly and the knees is to create a little bit of design of the webbing of his toes. So I just drew a shadow of dots up between where his toes would be. This isn't scientific or any type of fancy anatomy. I'm just doing what feels best. I found a leopard frog one day when I was at a crafting garage sale this summer, and that was what inspired me to draw spots on him because a lot of the tree frogs around here are pretty solid green, but a leopard frog does have really nice spots. And he's a cartoon frog, so it really doesn't matter. Now that I've completed the green, I'm moving over to the ice gray blend, and I'm going to use the very lightest one for giving his eyeballs a shadow. I'm going down and around and leaving the top up by his eyebrows completely light. And once again, I'm doing really short strokes so I can control the movement of my marker. Next, I'm going to the middle color of this marker and I'm going to color the rocks. And once I get done with coloring the base part of the rocks, I'm going to move to the darkest part of this marker and add some speckles on them too. This only takes a few seconds, but I think it makes it worth it. Next, I'm moving over to the ice blue blend. I'm using the lightest color for the wings because they are the most transparent. Then I'm going to the middle color for the eyeballs on the fly. Next, here I'm reaching for my red brown blend and I'm going to color the body of the fly with the middle shade of the marker. Then I'm going to come over to the cattails using the same middle shade. I'm going to cover the entire cattail part with the medium of the red brown. Once I'm done there, I'm going to switch over to the darker end of the marker and give a shadow on the left side. Now for the plants and all that, I am doing a shadow that's coming in from the left side, which means that the sunlight is kind of coming in from the right. And so everything's going to be a little bit darker and shaded on the left side of the image. This dull green marker is going to get quite a workout because we're going to use all three of the shades. First, I'm going to use the lightest tip for the smallest leaves down at the left end. Once I go over them once, I'm going to darken some of those leaves on the left side by going over them again a second time using that light one. Now I will hit the leaves on the end stem of the tulip and I'm going to stick with the lightest version of this marker, but not for long. Now I'm moving to the middle shade and I'm going to put a little bit of a dark shadow along the left edges of the leaves. Now I want a different color for the cattails and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the mid which is the middle color of this and I'm going to color the entire foliage of the cattail with the middle shade and then I'm going to come back no big surprise here and use the darkest end to create some more shadows. So here I've created about five, maybe six different colors with one marker by blending them and layering the colors. Here I'm going back and using the mid-tone again and filling in a few little white gaps and blending it. I'm going to color the little daisy with the citrus blend and from the get-go here I'm just using the darkest one because you're going to see what I'm going to do with the coral shades marker. The coral shades is one of the darker markers of the coral family and it actually looks a lot like a red. So even with this, I'm using the light end and I'm going to come back and go over the citrus yellow and I'm going to give that flower a bright orange center. 
Now I'm using the medium and I'm going to go over the entire tulip flower. And of course you guess it, I am going to go back and use the darkest shade for some shadows and definition of the tulip. Next, I'm grabbing that same white jelly roll and adding eyeballs to the fly. And then I'm going to add a few streaks to the wings just to give them a little bit of accent. Aren't these eyeballs just adorable? Moving along, I'm going to stamp the dragonfly die cut. First, I noticed that the tail wasn't laying flat, so I flattened it out on the, using the table and I'm stamping it with the intense black ink. Next, I'm going to color the entire dragonfly with the purple violet blend. This way I can go over the entire dragonfly, including its eyes and bodies, and give it a beautiful color of violet. If you've happened to look at the card workshop that comes with this kit, you will see that we have some stencils and they don't use any type of markers to color this. But don't worry, we're gonna to get to use the stencil, but I'm only going to apply one color of Distress Oxide ink. What I'm doing here is making sure that there's some purple violet on the wings and on the body. This stamp and thin cut set includes three stencils for coloring the wings. I've added a piece of washi tape here to make these stencils show up more easily on my desktop. They are super easy to use. Just align them and then use a sponge dauber or one of these blending tools in our catalog to go over the wings. I am using the edge of the sponge so that I can strategically place the blue right in the middle of the wings. Now let's assemble the rest of this card. I'm going to fold the wings up to give it a little bit of dimension. Here I have my choice of thick or thin 3D foam tape, and usually I choose thin for these type of cards. I'm going to provide lots of stability for this frog by lots of little pieces of tape. The dragonfly will only get it 3D foam underneath its body. That way, the wings can kind of fly and be lifted up from the page. Okay, it is time to make my card sparkle. I love using stickles, especially this formula called Glisten. It has lots of different colors in it, and it's more sparkly than the diamond ones and it really does pick up the colors of your project. So I'm just applying this on the wings, and then I will also add a few dots to the frog. For final touches, I added some clear shimmer brush. Thank you for watching. Please follow, like, and share this video. Below are a list of items that I use to create this project. Thank you for watching and have a great day.